my dear students assalamu alaikum as a part of the course company foreign government today we will discuss basic structure of the us government from this topic we will learn basic structure of us government branches of us government functions of branches in brief relations among branches in brief I, Dr. Mohan Samsud Jaman, delivering the lecture on this topic. USA branches, government branches are three branches. The government is consists of three branches, legislative, executive, and judicial. Constitution provides a separation of powers. Legislative branch is consists of two houses, it is named Congress. There are two house of, houses of Congress, Senate and House of Representatives. Senate is upper house of Congress and House of Representatives is the lower house of the Congress. Executive branch consists with President, Vice President and Cabinet members. Judicial branches consist with Supreme Court and other federal courts. For, the, for all that it is and does, the United States federal government is based on a very simple system. Three functional branches with powers separated and limited by constitutional declared checks and balance. The executive, legislative, and judicial branches represents the constitutional framework envisioned by the founding father US nation's government Together, they function to provide a system of lawmaking and enforcement based on checks and balances and separation of powers intended to ensure that no individual or body of government ever becomes more powerful, more powerful. For example, Congress. Legislative branches branch can pass laws, but the president executive branch can veto them. Congress can overread the president's veto. The Supreme Court judicial branch can declare a law approved by Congress and the president unconstitutional. The president can appoint judges to the Supreme Court, but Congress must approve them. Is the system perfect? Are powers are abused? Of course. But as governments go, has been working quite well since September 17, from, 80, uh, from 1787. As Alexander Hamilton and James Madison remind us in Federalist 51st, if men are angels, no government would be necessary. Recognizing the inherent moral paradox posed by a society in which mere morals govern other mere moral mortals. Hamilton and Madison went on to write, in framing a government which is to be administered by man over man, the great difficulty lies in this, you must first enable the government to control the government and in the next place. The executive branch of the federal government ensures that the laws of the United States are obeyed. In carrying out this duty, the president of the United States is assisted by the vice president, department heads, called cabinet secretaries, and the heads of the several independent agencies. The executive branch consists of the president, the vice president, and the 15 cabinet level executive departments. The executive branch carries out and enforces laws. It includes the president, vice president, the cabinet executive departments, independent agencies, and other boards, commissions, and committees. American citizens have the right to vote for the president and vice president through free confidential ballots. The power of the executive branch is vested in the president of the United States, who also act as head of state and commander-in-chief of the armed forces. 
The president is responsible for implementing and enforcing the laws written by Congress and to that end appoints the heads of the federal agencies, including cabinet. The vice president is also part of the executive branch, ready to assume the presidency should the need arise. The cabinet and independent federal agencies are responsible for the day-to-day -day enforcement and administration of federal laws. These departments and agencies have missions and responsibilities as widely divergent as those of the Department of Defense and the Environmental Protection Agency, the Social Security Administration, and the Securities and Exchange Commission, including members of the armed forces the executive branch employs more than 4 million adjectives. Key roles of the executive branch includes the president is both the head of state and head of government of the United States of America and commanding chief of the armed forces. Under Article 2 of the Constitution, the president is responsible for execution and enforcement of the laws created by Congress. 15 executive departments, each led by an appointed member of the president's cabinet, carry out the day-to-day -day administration of the federal government. They are joined in this by other executive agencies, such as the CIA and Environmental Protection Agency, the heads of which are not part of the cabinet, but who are under the full authority of the president. infographic poster, how to become president of the United States. Let us discuss the infographic poster. The constitution lists only three qualifications for the presidency. The president must be 35 years of age, be a natural born citizen, American citizen, and must have lived in the United States for at least 14 years. The first steps of election of president, president, presidential election process, primary and caucus. There are many people who want to be president. Each of these people have their own ideas about how our government should work. People with similar ideas belong to the same political party this is our primaries and caucus. Some came come in. Candidates from each political party campaign throughout the country to win the favor of their party members. Caucus in a caucus, party members select the best candidate through a series of discussion and votes. Primary. In a primary, party members vote for the best candidate that will represent them in general election, in the general election. Step two, national conventions. Each party holds a national convention to finalize the selection of one president nominee. At each convention, the presidential candidate chooses a running mate, vice president candidate. Step three, general election. The presidential candidates campaign throughout the country in an attempt to win the support of the general population. People in every state across the country vote for one president and one vice president. When people cast their vote, they are actually voting for a group of people known as electors. In the electoral college system, each state gets a certain number of electors based on its total number of representatives in Congress. Each elector cast one electoral vote following the general election. There are a total of 538 electoral votes. The candidate that gets more than half, 270, wins the election. The president elect and vice president elect take the oath of office are inaugurated in January. Definitions, what we understand the terms, caucus, delegate, elector, electoral college, let us see what caucus mean. A meeting of the local members of a political party to select delegates 
to the National Party Convention, the caucus is a substitute for a primary election. Delegate, a person authorized to represent others as an elective representative to a political party conference. Elector, a member of the electoral college, electoral college, the voters of each state and the District of Columbia vote for electors to be the authorized constitutional members in a presidential election. Natural born citizen, what is meaning natural born citizen? Someone born with US citizenship includes any child born in the United States, the children of United States citizens born abroad, and those born abroad of one citizen parent. Primary, an election where votes select candidates for an upcoming general election. Winning candidates will have delegates sent to the National Party Convention as the party's US presidential committee. Through millions of Americans vote in a presidential election every four years, the president is not in fact directly elected by the people. Instead, on the first Tuesday in November of every fourth year, the people elect the members of the electoral college appointed by population to the 50 states. One for each member of their congressional delegation with the District of Columbia receiving three votes. These electors then cast the votes for president. There are currently 538 electors in the electoral college. President Donald Trump, the current president, is the 45th president of the United States. He is, however, only the 44th president person over to serve as president. He is the 44th person. President Grover Cleveland served two non-consecutive terms and thus is recognized as both the 22nd and the 24th president. Today, the president is limited to two four, two four year terms. But until the 22nd amendment to the constitution, ratified in 1951, a president could serve an unlimited number of terms. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected president four times, serving from 1932 until his death in 1945. He is the only president able to have served more than two terms. By tradition, the president and the first family live in the White House in Washington, D.C., also the location of the president's Oval Office and the office of his senior staff. When the president travels by plane, his aircraft is designed Air Force One. He may also use the Marine Corps helicopter, known as Marine One, while the president is on board. For ground travel, the president uses an armed, armored presidential limousine. The vice president. The primary responsibility of the vice president of the United States is to be ready to ready at moments notice to assume the presidency if the president is unable to perform his duties. This can be because of the president's death, resignation, or temporary impeachment, or if the vice president and the majority of the cabinet charges does that the president is no longer able to discharge the duties of the presidency. The vice president is elected along with the president by the electoral college. Each elector cast one vote for the president and another for vice president. Before the ratification of the 12th amendment in 1804, electors only voted for president and the person who received the second greatest number of votes become vice president. The vice president also served as the president of the United States Senate, where he or she cast the deciding vote in the case of a tie. Except in the case of tie-breaking votes, the vice president rarely actually presides over the Senate. 
Instead, the Senate selects one of their own members, usually junior members of the majority party, to preside over the Senate each day. Michel R. Penny is the 48th Vice President of the United States of the 47th previous Vice Presidents. Nine have succeeded to the presidency and four have been elected to the presidency in their own right. The duties of the Vice President outside of those enumerated in the Constitution are at the discretion of the current president. Each Vice President approaches the role differently. Some takes on a specific policy portfolio, others serve simply as a top advisor to the president. The vice president has an office in the west wing of the White House, as well as the in the nearby Eisenhower Executive Office building. Like the president, he also maintains an official residence at the United States Naval Observatory in Northwest Washington, D.C. This peaceful mansion has been the official home of the Vice President since 1974. Previously, Vice President had lived in their own private residences. Executive Office of the President. Every day, the President of the United States is faced with scores of decisions, each with important consequences for America's future. The provide the president to provide the president with the support that he or she needs to govern effectively. The executive of the president was created in 1939 by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The executive office of the president has responsibility for tasks ranging from communicating the president's message to the American people to promoting American state interest abroad. The executive office overseen by the White House Chief of Staff has traditionally been home to many of the president's closest advisors. While Senate confirmation is required for some advisors, such as the director of the Office of the Management and Budget, most are appointed with full presidential discretion. The individual offices that these advisors oversee have grown in size and number since the executive office of the president was created. Some are formed by Congress, others and the president has need to take them. They are constantly shifting as each president identifies his needs and priorities. With the current executive office of president employing over 1,800 people. Perhaps the most visible parts of the executive office of the, uh, office of the president are the White House Communications Office and Press Secretary's Office. The Press Secretary provides daily briefings for the media on the president's activities and agenda. Less visible to most Americans is the National Security Council, which advises the president on foreign policy, intelligence, and national security. There are also a number of offices responsible for practicalities of maintaining the White House and providing logistical support for the president. This includes the White House military office, which is responsible for services ranging from Air Force One to the dining facilities and the office of presidential advance, while which prepares seats remote from the White House for the president's arrival. Many senior advisors in the executive office of the president work near the president in the west wing of the White House. However, the majority of the staff is housed in the Eisenhower Executive Office building, just a few steps away and part of the White House compound. The cabinet. The cabinet is an advisory board made up of the heads of the 15 executive departments appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate. The members of the cabinet are often the president's closest confidence. In addition to running major federal agencies, they play an important role 
in the presidential line of succession after the vice president, speaker of the house and senate, pres uh, senate president pro tempore, the line of succession continues with the cabinet office in the order in which the departments were created. All the members of the cabinet take the title secretary, except in the head of the justice department, who is styled attorney general. That's all for the executive branch of the United States of America. And on coming class, we will discuss